Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Simplifies Tutorials. In this tutorial we're going to look at attachment theory and the stages of attachment. So we are basically going to look at the work done by John Bowlby, by Mary Ainsworth, by Rudolf, Rudolf Schaffer and by Peggy Amazon. So at any point in time most human beings are actually bonded with or attached to other human beings. Now this attachment ensures that there is care and there is a sense of belongingness between people but different people get attached to you in different ways now some attachments are fantastic some are good and some are not so good now British psychologist uh, John Bowlby devoted extensive research into understanding attachment and explained how childhood experiences shape people's behavior when it comes to forming meaningful relationships in later life. So your childhood is the key. He described attachment as a lasting psychological connectedness between people. Previous findings on attachment actually suggested that uh, the reason children got attached to their mothers is because they were fed by them. Bowlby, however, observed that children experienced uh, distress when separated by their mothers, even when they were well fed. He proposed that the determinant of attachment is not food, but love, nurturing and care. Now, Bowlby believed that uh, there are some characteristics uh, related to attachment. He believed that children demonstrated certain characteristics when it comes to uh, their attachment with other people. And a strong attachment uh, of a child with the primary carer goes a long way in building trust in the child that he or she is safe in this world and can actually explore the outside world in due course. And what are these characteristics that uh, attachments possess? Now attachments tend to be uh, like safe heavens for, for children. So a child basically likes to return to the primary attachment figure for comfort and safety. So that primary attachment figure is a safe heaven. Okay, uh, Attachments tend to be like a secure base for the child. So the attachment figure acts as a secure base from which the outside world is then explored. So you've got one secure base and then you venture out to actually explore the outside world. Now attachments can also cause separation distress according to Bowlby. Uh, so this means that the absence of the, the primary attachment figure can, go, can cause uh, great distress in the child. And uh, there's also proximity maintenance, which comes with attachment. This means that uh, a child's desire, this, this directs towards a child's desire to be close to or in proximity with the people he or she is attached to. Okay, so these are the, the basic characteristics uh, as per Bowlby when it comes to uh, forming attachments or the nature of attachments. Now, we look at another piece of work when it comes to attachment theory. Uh, psychologist Mary Ainsworth expanded on Bowlby's work and actually came up with three styles of attachment that a child can form with the carer and stated that this is what can actually influence people later in their lives. Uh, and later research actually led to the formation of a fourth style. So we're going to look at all four styles and the four styles are starting with secure attachment. So these are the types of attachments that people can form during their childhood years, by the way. So secure attachment. So children who develop a secure attachment feel secure and happy and are eager, eager to explore their surroundings. So this is the child's attachment with their primary caregiver parents uh, or foster parents or mother or the father. Now, although they get distressed by their caregiver's absence, they're assured of their return when they're actually secured. In this situation, the caregiver's behavior tends to be consistent and sensitive. That is what leads to secure attachments. Okay. Now, the next type of attachment is uh, anxious, resistant, insecure attachment. Now, this is uh, this is obviously not 
a secure attachment it's an insecure form of attachment also just called as an anxious attachment now children who develop this sort of attachment feel insecure and do not actually trust their caregivers now the caregivers responses are inconsistent in this case and the child's needs are neglected at times and this is what results in this sort of an attachment now such children can actually demonstrate helplessness and anger now the next type of attachment is uh, anxious avoidant insecure attachment another form of insecure attachment now children who develop this sort of an attachment uh, feel that their caregiver cannot be trusted to fulfill uh, any of their needs uh, in such situations the caregiver is often disengaged and emotionally aloof and this is what results in this sort of an attachment uh, developed by the child children here are anxious on the inside but their behavior is indifferent to the presence of their caregiver uh, so irrespective of whether the caregiver is present or absent there's no change in behavior it's a, it's a constant anxiety on the inside that persists and it's extremely dangerous obviously the next type is disorganized or disoriented attachment now children who don't fit in any of the other categories are generally categorized as uh, as disorganized or disoriented now these children could act depressed they can act angry and can almost always be unpredictable they can sometimes be angry specifically in the presence of the caregiver actually which is quite interesting and quite disturbing the caregiver in this case could have the tendency of swaying between being passive to being aggressive at the drop of the hat so uh, that is what actually result in a very disoriented attachment uh, for, for a child now we move on to looking at uh, the work of Rudolf Schaeffer and Peggy Emerson now they carried out studies uh, to understand how and when attachments develop in infants now this is what is referred to as uh, the stages of attachment so attachment isn't formed uh, is informed instantly it takes time and it goes through various stages in the life of an infant so what are these stages the first stage is the asocial stage and that happens before uh, between zero to six weeks and in this stage infants uh, aren't particularly attached to their specific caregivers they they like the presence of other people in general and give out basic responses like smiling crying making like eye contact etc but these gestures come out to attract attention and encourage the caregivers to actually remain close to them so there isn't a specific attachment to the caregiver uh, it's it's just an attachment overall with people the next stage is the indiscriminate attachments stage that happens between uh, six weeks to seven months in this stage infants start enjoying human company especially com the company of familiar people they start developing an understanding of who the primary caregiver is and that there can be secondary uh, caregivers in addition to the primary caregiver they also develop trust that their primary caregiver will respond to their needs and hence start responding more to them than any secondary prime uh, caregiver so this is the stage where there is an understanding that there exists a primary caregiver the mother or the father whatever and then there will be other people as well who are who can be secondary caregivers now the next stage is the specific attachment stage quite important seven to nine months now at this stage children develop a special preference for their primary caregiver they demonstrate stranger anxiety and separation anxiety a very important concept so now uh, when an infant becomes quiet or hides behind the the primary caregiver when, when encountered by a stranger he or she is actually demonstrating stranger anxiety and when a child demonstrates uh, distress even with a momentary separation uh, from the caregiver if uh, he or she is separated even if uh, it's for a very, very short interval he or she is demonstrate uh, demonstrating separation anxiety okay so separation anxiety and stranger anxiety are are a part of the learnings are a part of uh, the types of attachments developed in this stage very important stage now the next stage is the multiple attachments stage and this happens between 10 to 18 months at this stage 
infants uh, start developing, uh, start becoming independent rather, and start forming attachments with multiple people in their lives. And this can be various people like siblings, grandparents, neighbors, etc. And these are people who respond sensitively to them. So all of the people that respond to the child, to the infant, uh, become become care caregivers uh, to a certain level, become people that they associate themselves with at this stage. So at this stage, the the attempt is to look at uh, multiple people and form multiple attachments. Okay, now what do we learn from attachment theories? How do how does how do attachment theories actually help us? Now attachment theories uh, suggest to us that our our behavior with fellow human beings is affected by our psyche which is actually developed as a result of how attachments developed for us early in life so it basically outlines the importance of forming healthy attachments uh, early in your life now children diagnosed with conditions like PTSD which is uh, post-traumatic stress disorder often uh, encountered neglect or abuse in early phases of their life so they were not able to actually form healthy attachments attachment styles displayed in adulthood are seldom like those displayed in childhood so attachment styles will change a person uh, who, who didn't form healthy or stable attachments uh, secure attachments uh, as a child doesn't necessarily translate into uh, a person with a disorder or a problematic relationship history in future but there is always a chance now adults who who were securely attached as children for instance tend to have uh, a higher probability of developing emotional strength good self-esteem and can actually develop better social skills because of their ability to trust other people so their ability to trust other people came at a very early age so that continues that stays with them that gets harbored and once you get a once you get a good start with anything you obviously build upon that start and you lay a foundation for a for, for a stable future so this is how everything works in life and this is what attachment theory tries to explain to us it, it tries to explain to us the importance of childhood relationships and how attachments uh, formed during childhood help us uh, be stable and be that person who can form stable relationships be sociable be that person who tries to help one and all so it tries to explain to us how a good childhood will help bring about uh, a good society okay I hope that was helpful for you. That was uh, an overview of all the major contributors to attachment theory. I thank you very much uh, for your attendance as uh, always. Please like this tutorial. Please subscribe to this channel if you're new here. Uh, please also uh, pay a visit to my Facebook page. Uh, the link will be in the description. And keep supporting and sharing more content. And there will be more content coming up. Uh, on a more regular basis. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.